What's up guys, in this video we're going to be taking a detailed look at the 4-3 and 3-4 formations. We'll be comparing them, showing you the differences between the two, talking about the basics of these defenses so you have a solid understanding on how these defensive formations work because you can literally, I can make a, a 10 hour video going in depth about both of these formations but all you really need to understand are the basics which I'm going to show you right now. Um, we're going to talk about which one is better and uh, personnel tweaks you can make with both the 4-3 and the 3-4 defenses to play to your liking. So let's get started. Let's go take a look at the 4-3 uh, normal. Now the explanation that I'm going to make would apply to all 4-3 formations for the most part but the 4-3 normal just we're just starting off with that and um we just go i form i form pro we're not really going to run a play we're just going to talk through everything about what's going on so four three defense the the main idea with the four three defense well let's just start off with the name first four three it's to signify four defensive linemen four true defensive linemen three linebackers four three four Three. That's where we get the name four three from. And um, the idea of the four three defense is we have four defensive linemen compared to the three fours three defensive linemen. But what the difference is is that with that extra lineman, we are using that extra lineman. That's our plus. That's what we're gaining. We're giving up size. Because 3-4 has more size to the defensive lineman. But we're gaining an extra member in the idea of having four defensive linemen to keep these linebackers clean behind them in the run game. Meaning that the offensive linemen are going to have a harder time to get to the second level to block them. in the way that the defensive linemen traditionally do it in a traditional sense in a 4-3 since they're giving up size in the overall scheme, you can do you can put who how, how whatever kind of person you want on the field, but just talking traditionally in the traditional sense, they're giving up size, but they're gaining athleticism and mobility. They're causing this havoc, which keeps the offensive linemen off of those linebackers through causing chaos, getting up the field, creating different angles and slashing and all this that and the third that's how the 4-3 defense works mainly with 4-3 defenses you'll have slants to the left slants to the right um, all kinds of different slants that you can do and all of that is to help keep the linebackers clean so that so that's the 4-3 uh, normal what you're seeing right now which I like to make all explanations from the 4-3 normal because it's easy to transfer it to other formations. Now, the defensive playbook that I'm in right now, it has the 4-3 and the 3-4. That's the reason I picked it for this example, so I didn't have to get out and show you different playbooks or whatever. But it does not have every single 4-3 formation available to you. But the second example, which I will get to the 4-3 under, if you, if, when you look at both of these, these different formations, you'll understand pretty much... 90% of what goes into the 4-3 defense. Now let's get to the 4-3 under and we'll just do a Tampa 2. So since I moved this guy, he's not moving to play, so I'm going to move him where he would be, which would be right here. Now, this is still a 4-3 defense, even though there are technically five players on the line of scrimmage. This player right here, he is, I don't know why I did that, but uh, he is a uh, linebacker. Let me make sure I got the right play. Yeah, he's a linebacker. So he is our fifth man on the line of scrimmage, which kind of resembles a 3-4 in a way, but he is a linebacker. The same things still apply. Um, you can make some tweaks to the personnel up front to give you what you're looking for, but the same idea still exists. These guys are on the line of scrimmage to help protect these linebackers 
So that's just a change in the way the formation looks, but it still uh, it still works the same way. See this guy right here, if it's a run to the left side, he already has the outside gap, which allows Davis to get over the top. This guy, he has the outside shoulder of the guard, which still protects that gap. But in uh, this defensive tackle, he has the inside shoulder of, you, you could say, both the guard and the center. Which allows Davis to play this run lane too. And if it's a right, it's a, if it's an outside right run, he could get into his pursuit angle and get over the top. Same thing we already mentioned. What these guys are doing right here, it allows Keekly to get into this gap if it's a run to the left, and it also allows him to get over the top if it's a run outside. And since Short is a he he is occupying both the gaps the gap in between the center and the right guard and my man right here he's occupying the the C gap it allows Keekly and he this guy Thompson he's he technically has outside contain but just even if he gets blocked it allows Keekly to come clean over the top because there's no one else to block him besides the fullback but if there's no fullback, he is coming over the top clean. So that's why I say these defensive linemen, their jobs are literally to block out the uh, offensive linemen from getting to the second level to the linebackers. And they do that mainly through, you know, mobility, speed, slashing, causing chaos. That is how the 4-3 functions. Now let's get into the 3-4. Now there are literally a thousand different... Three, four formations, uh, literally a thousand. But I'm just gonna stick with the uh, the uh, the three, four odd, which you know will show you. But there's like different, quite a different variations, and all the variations do and move move like defensive linemen inside, outside a little bit. Linebackers maybe a little bit close, a little bit outside. But it's all still, you know, it all still is the same thing. And I know I moved him, so I'm gonna see if I can get him back to where he was. Okay. So, a little bit difference in the alignment. That's the first thing you noticed. But let's before we even get into that, like I said before with the 4-3, the 4-3 uses four defensive linemen to keep the linebackers clean off of, you know, mobility, stunts, fronts. They have smaller uh, smaller linemen. The 3-4 traditionally will have bigger linemen because they have less men to keep the linebackers clean. So these Three hogs right here are going to be doing a lot of grunt work. You want big, fat, run stuffers, guys that just can't be moved in a traditional sense. We'll get into personnel, you know, tinkers later. But traditionally, traditionally you'll want big, fat guys, big, strong guys, guys that are hard to move. Um, and meaning by that is the idea is these guys are so big they should not be able to be blocked one-on-one. -on -one. So it will more than likely need a combo block from another offensive lineman, um, which frees up, you know, gives these linebackers who should, in a traditional sense, would be a, a little bit bigger than 4-3 linebackers. 4-3 linebackers are fast guys, fast moving guys. Really the only big guy in a traditional sense in a 4-3 lineman, in a 4-3 uh, linebacker core, is the strong side linebacker. But you'll have bigger middle linebackers in 3-4, in a traditional sense. Like I said, you can do personnel tweaks however you wanna have them done, but in a traditional sense, they'll be bigger because they would, have to take on you know linemen straight up if if the offensive scheme opted to leave these big hogs single blocked which would allow like a, this guard could be running straight at mayo so he has to be bigger to be able to withhold that pounding so that is really the the, the key difference between the 3-4 and the 4-3 it's just personnel type and types of formations and um with a 3-4 with you mainly will see 
formations where you have defensive linemen head up, which means they're like directly over top of the linemen that they're over top of. So he's directly short is directly over top of the center. He's over top, directly over top of the tackle, and he's directly over top of the tackle. That is one thing that is shown in multiple 3-4 formations, but also there are 3-4 formations where they're on where they're shaded as well on the linemen. But in the traditional sense, this is more of a mark of a 3-4 than a 4-3, if that makes any sense. 4-3, you will dang near always ha have a defensive lineman on a shade of the offensive lineman. He won't really be head up ever. Because that's, you know, they make their plays by being shifty and, you know, agile, stuff like that, slanting in and out. That's just how it is. So, so now that you know the basics of the core of how both of these formations work from a front standpoint, because that's the only thing that's important is the front. Everything that's happening with the defensive backs, you don't really care because you can replicate that from whatever formation you're in. The things that stay consistent are the fronts of the 4-3 and the 3-4. So those are the differences you have to really pay attention to. Um, let's get into what is better. Now, me during my Madden journey, my long, my long, 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 long time playing Madden, I have cut my teeth playing both formations at times, but I would say when I was most well known in the community, I I would say I was one of the spearheads of the 4-3 defense. I preached it. I was telling everyone, yeah, the 4-3 is better than the 3-4. There's so many things you can do from it that you can't do from the 3-4. All of this, that, and the third. I loved the 4-3 like it was my own flesh and blood, man. I really loved that formation. But... And plus, I made it kind of semi-famous in a way back in the day. But that's another story here. That's another story. Another video, another story. Um, that's also why I loved it so much. But realistically speaking, there are major differences in what you can do and what you can't do from both the 3-4 and the 4-3 defenses. They both have the pros and cons. So, I, so honestly, there is no... There isn't a better formation. It depends on what you want to do, what your game plan is, what you feel comfortable with, how well you like to adapt and move guys around. Do you like stability? Do you like causing chaos? Things like that. It all depends on what you want to do. So I can't say that one is better than the other in a general sense. But in, let me just break down quick examples of things that, you know, for example, let's go through what the 3-4 excels at. The 3-4 really excels at, and I'm just going to go random play right here. It excels at adapting to everything that can be thrown at it extremely easily. Let's just go this this play right here. doesn't really matter. Uh, let me go cover two. So, here we got the 3-4, how it be, how would we you know, how the play art would look, right? Against a, you could say this is a pseudo spread look. You have a spread to the left side. You have a normal traditional formation to the right side. So it's, but it'll be one of the looks that you will, is most common in the game. The thing that I really love about the three, four, again, this is me picking up the three, four right now is, um, you can adapt to any formation in the game extremely easily and there's a ton of ways you can do it. Now, what I like to do, what I like to preach, when there's any formation with a slot, you have to figure out how you're gonna guard him. How are you gonna just align to him, first and foremost? How are you aligning to him? Now, the 3-4 really doesn't have an issue with that because they already have a guy that's, you know, splitting the difference. It can be dangerous depending on how the game plays each and every year. He can be a danger to pick off a quick flat route to the slot receiver if he's in a hard flat. So just off of his alignment alone, he's cool. But you could want him directly over the top. Now, people may be saying, oh, you just create a big bubble by moving him outside. Did you really? 
because Mayo still has the uh, ability to get over the outside if it was a run to the left side of the field. He still has that ability just off nature. Or Adams could come down and fill this alleyway. Or you could just bring him down anyway. And now you have this type of look. Or you could just move him over the top of him and keep him where he's moved Davis over here. So now it's a more traditional look, but you've adjusted to the slot with the safety instead. So there's a bunch of different ways, a bunch of crazy things you can do from the 3-4 that you necessarily can't do all the time from the 4-3. Another thing is you're able to send all kinds of different blitzes because you know you have four linebacker types. Even though in a traditional sense, these outside guys would be bigger, bigger, stronger, even more than the middle linebacker guys that I talked about before because these guys are directly taking blocks from you know uh offensive tackles they're directly taking those blocks so they have to be bigger again you can do personnel changes however you want to but in the traditional sense they are bigger you still have four guys that can move a little bit that have the potential of blitzing and rushing the passer along with any array of things going on with the defensive linemen so with the four with the three four what you gain is just superior ability to adjust to different offensive formations and alignments. And you gain the ability to cause chaos because you have more guys in position to rush the passer in a dangerous position, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So those are your pros. Now, let's get into the 4-3. The and talk about those pros. And we'll just for giggles, we'll come out in the same formation. If I can remember what the formation was. I think this was it. So, like I said, there are more ways to adjust to formations from the 3-4, which won't leave you as vulnerable. Now, for instance, in a 3-4 normal or... You, I mean, a 4-3 normal, um, a 4-3 stack or whatever. The only ways to really adjust to this slot is like you can move your, your safety out. You can keep him deep, move your safety out, bring him on the line of scrimmage. Or a variation of moving this linebacker out. But it creates a bubble in between these guys, an actual bubble, but that would have to be filled by Adams. And everyone would know that. You can move him out and move him on the line of scrimmage. You can split the difference. It still creates a little bit of a bubble. But, you know, like I said, like you, you have less options, less sexy options. So if you like more standard play, if you like that rigid rigidness, the 4-3 is what you need to go with. Um, me personally, I have excelled in both types of styles of, of you know, simplicity, rigidness, and you know chaotic lineups and things like that i've played both ways but i and i've i've excelled in both ways but i personally like line them up and we'll just hit you in the mouth football so i like the four three that that's just me it's a personality thing so we've mentioned the cons of you know you don't have as many sexy options to adjust the formations from the 4-3. But what you do have, what you do have is you have tried and true, standard, non-sexy ways to adjust the formations. Now, this is really game specific. It depends on what year of Madden you're playing. Some years are different. Some years things are more effective than others. But you can get away with, stand, with the 4-3. You know you have goons up front that can hold their position. Again, it's game specific. You have to test this. But in certain formations, you may want to bring a guy right here. You know it leaves a, a bubble, but you know that this guy will hold his area. You know what he's going to do. And it's a standard way you can adjust to a formation 
every single time. Now, I'm not saying like this is a great adjustment for the, for this formation in particular, but I'm just saying in practice mode, you can test things out and come up with standard alignments that work for you against certain formations. So like you can have a standard way of how, how, how am I adjusting to this slot? Now, you may not have a thousand different ways like, you know, the three, four would give you, but you can have one or two or three different ways that you can drill into your, your head and just stick with. And you'll always know it no matter what formations you'll go against. As soon as you develop a way of handling that formation from the from the four, three, you're good to go. You're golden. You just have to tweak from there because it's all muscle memory. And if you have the same three adjustments that's given to you versus certain looks, it's easy to remember. But if you're in a 3-4 and you have a thousand things you could possibly do against a formation, yeah, it's cool, but you may get, you may, you know, you know, bite off a little bit more than you could chew. Those are things you have to live with when uh, choosing which formation is better for you. Like I said, depending on your personality is depending on which formation you will want to go with. Um, a little bit less degree depends on how the game's playing. Some games are 4-3 games. Some year it's three, four years, but I don't, I don't really put too much stock into it because you can be successful from every single defense. But depending on how the developers developed that year, uh, the four, three might get a little bit better than it normally would be, or it might be a little worse than it normally would be. Same for the three, four. So just get in practice mode test, but overall it is a personality thing, how you would like to go. So we've talked about what's better, which it's, I don't, they're really a tie. It just depends on what you want to do. Let's talk about personnel tweaks. Let's just go back to the uh, main screen. And I've been talking for a long time. So, we mentioned about, you know, the types of players you're looking for in both 3 4 and 4 3. Two ways, a small degree. Because you literally, like I said, you can talk about both of these formations for 10 hours each. There's so many things you can really just the depth that goes into it, but don't stay married to the idea in a three four even in a traditional sense that they have to be big bulky guys. I've learned throughout the years the best three four teams are four three teams, if that makes any sense. So if a team is traditionally four three. They work really well in a 3-4 just off of alignment purposes, just off of raw ability purposes. Normally you'll have you have four linemen traditionally in a 4-3. And if you go to a 3-4, you just have three linemen slots to fill. Which, if you're in a situation where Madden hasn't been like this recently, but back in the day you would have to actually play backups. Your backups would be coming on the field if they got, if your starters got tired. So those backups mattered. Having that depth mattered. So and also, you can just free just just free will with these guys. You could have an all speed lineup, an all speed front seven lineup with both of these formations. Don't just stick to traditional sense of what these formations are supposed to be used for. You could have all, everyone on your defensive line could be defensive ends. Why not? Think of the pros and the cons. Weigh it out in your head. You could have two defensive ends on the left side of the, of the field, two defensive tackles on the right side of the field. M mismatch. Mix and match your guys. You know, just have a ball. Your, your linebackers could be, instead of, you know, in a 4-3 faster guys, go with big, heavier, you know, run type guys. Run stuffer guys. Guys that are bigger and able to handle blocks better. They get better block sheds. See if that works out for you. Go with safeties at linebacker. At 3-4, go with an all-speed lineup like I mentioned before. It's have three, four, three type defensive ends plug them into your big fat nasty D-line spots. Now you got fast dudes, shifty dudes, good pass rushing dudes head up on linemen 
you know, slanting in, slanting out. Now they're taking four, three elements and bringing them to the three, four. Get creative with your personnel because running the traditional sense of how these formations are supposed to be run, yeah, it works. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's a good um, blueprint, benchmark, good thing for you to follow. But you will never take a formation in a year of Madden as far as it can possibly go unless you start experimenting with personnel and tweak things. Maybe a right outside linebacker, maybe he will just be a goon playing at middle linebacker. Try it out. Maybe you got your guy that is as fast as all get out in a 4-3. He's the, uh, the right outside linebacker. Put him at middle and have bigger linebackers play the outside positions. Mix and match your guys on the front as well as the linebacking position. See what you get. There are a lot of different things you can do to unlock these formations to take them to the next level. This video is long as hell, guys. Um, hopefully, you guys have got some good information. This is pretty much the basic rundown that will give you all the information that you need to choose between the 3-4 or the 4-3 defenses. Um, hopefully, it gave you good information. This is some really good information as far as... It, it takes people are always asking which one should I go with. After watching this video, hopefully I've given you that answer. It's up to you, but hopefully I've led you along a path for which you can see yourself utilizing one of these formations.